Greetings, Pearl citizens. It is I, your fearless leader, Will the Chill, coming to you with episode 11 of our world-famous Pearl Town Hall. Thank you for joining us. This is uh, our 11th episode. We're very happy to be here with you from the Pearl capital of the world, Austin, Texas. Some of you may know me by my legal name, Will Braswell. I am the president of the Austin Pearlmongers, the creator of our Pearl, the Optimizing Compiler, and many other things such as the Pearl Community Roadmap, ML Pearl, and the Pearl Town Hall, etc. So again, thank you everyone for joining us. Hello, Mr. Mokapati. Thank you. Welcome for joining us. And everyone else that is watching us either live or pre-recorded. Reminder, if you are watching live, be sure to type in the comments and we can uh, read your ideas, give you live feedback and, and uh, real-time interaction. So today on episode 11, we will be doing our Pearl News Desk once again. Um, a very popular format for this show, and it is our uh, lead-up week. Yes, uh, leading up to the conference. So again, thank you everyone for joining us in the Pearl Town Hall. All right, we're leading up. We're leading up to our annual Pearl Conference, which is next week. We will have um, probably some special Pearl Town Hall coverage for that. I know that y'all are uh, definitely looking forward to that with <gasps> bated breath. Um, but yes, we will, uh, we will probably have a, um, a panel discussion with the Pearl Programming Group um, administration team with, uh, with your fearless leader at the helm and our other um, awesome leaders, admins, and moderators, and so forth. So look forward to that coming up next week. Now, on, uh, on today's episode, we're going to uh, be trying out our new broadcasting software. As you can tell, things look a little bit different. We have our, um, our actual Pearl Town Hall logo, which you should be able to see all above and, and around me here and uh, we're going to be also sharing some of our screen as we go through our Pearl News Desk. All right, let's go ahead and uh, open up Facebook and make sure that we can actually see everybody that's on here and I want to, uh, oh boy, there we go, okay. Welcome everyone. Hello, Chris, Jack. Thank you for joining and everyone else that is online at this time. Be sure to type in your comments and I can uh, hopefully see them pop up and reply to them live. All right, now uh, let's see if we can bring up... We're going to go ahead and bring up um, our website here and the... Uh, let's see... Yep, I did I open that one already? I've got several things that I want to go over with y'all today. And they were um, multiple different news items related to Pearl. So let's go ahead and uh, share our screen here. And let's see, hopefully this will uh, work right. Ding! Okay, actually this the color is wrong. Oh boy. Hang on, let me see if I can edit this real quick here because apparently it is swapping the colors. Um, let's see. Pro Programmers, there we go. Ah, okay, color correction. Thank you, OBS. So here we are on our Pearl Programmers Facebook group. And uh, hopefully I won't have any intrusions from people sending me messages and so forth. I apologize in advance if that occurs. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, we have, uh, we have a number of items that I was going to link off of here, news items for the day. Um, first of all, you can see right here at the top, we actually have, uh, for the first time in 
quite some time, a uh, brand new cover image. Yay! And this, uh, this cover image, here I think that I can blow it up a little bit bigger for you all there. Yes. Um, we give all of the uh, credit, photo credit, and thanks, and um, full, uh, full brownie points in every way to our good friend and member of the Pearl Administration staff, Dean Hampstead, Dean of the Sydney, Australia Pearl Mongers, um, now part of the uh, California, United States Pearl people. Um, he has taken it upon himself to uh, photograph all of his Pearl books. Now, I will admit he has, uh, I think, more Pearl books than I do, but I have uh, several of these that he has here as well, as I'm sure many of us do. And um, we formerly had a picture of uh, St. Larry Wall doing some uh, live coding on some sort of controlled program or something. And uh, that was a really neat program, uh, or that was a really neat uh, photo of him doing some uh, work on that program. But um, we wanted to, to change it up a little bit. Now, I know not everyone knows who Larry Wall is. And, uh, and maybe you don't care or need to know who he is. You just care about programming in Perl. So that was the idea to change it up for a little while. I think that in a few months we will come back and uh, switch it back to a St. Larry picture. I have a few good ones. But we'll go back and forth. We're, uh, we promise not to become... Uh, a, an annoying constant change. This is uh, a, a very um, rare occurrence that we would try and make a change like this. We like our Pro Programmers group to be a constant, stable um, community, uh, a, a constant, stable part of the Pearl community. Um, so if you, if you like it, let us know. If you don't like it, also let us know. If you have some um, books that are not in here that you think we should know about, let us know about that as well. Um, I pointed out that there was my, one of my uh, favorites, just because it's such, such an important early book for people to read, Learning Pearl. Learning Pearl. Um, not in the photograph, but the alpaca book, a very good book. So don't fail to get that one as well. Lots of good O'Reilly books, lots of good other books here. And I believe that uh, the, the Pearl CD bookshelf does include Learning Pearl, just uh, not the physical book. So anyhow, that's pretty neat. Um, there's a whole load of comments about people, um, what kind of books they like and, and uh, what they've been thinking about. And uh, uh, quite a few likes on that one. So I take it that people are happy that we have a photo of Dean's Pearl books. Um, mm, let me see. Mezion Castle, Castle says, hello. Uh, nice presentation. Thank you, Mezion. Mezion. Sorry, I'm sure I am uh, doing a bad job pronouncing everyone's names. Um, please let me know how to correctly pronounce your name and I will do my best. But I always want to say hello to everyone as they join us. So thank you all for joining us. Okay, moving on. We have several other uh, news items. Um, hello, Tommy Butler. Thank you for joining in. We have several other news items that we were going to go over here. Um, <clears throat> all right, this one. Oh, yes, this is an interesting one. Step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a Pro module, including tests and Git integration, testing process and Git integration. So um, this this is a uh, <clears throat> an interesting document that we're gonna just not actually try and go through because it's quite uh, quite extensive and detailed. But as you can see, 
this is uh, this is a a very useful document that is not at all um, outdated. It's it's quite recent, just the from the end of 2019, and um, this is this is uh, essentially taking you day by day, day zero, day one, day two, um, all the way through to day eight, documentation, and so forth. And, uh, and you know, this, this is the kind of tutorial that should not be hidden away on GitHub. Um, first of all, use GitLab. Second of all, don't hide the tutorial away. I'm not saying this is necessarily hidden on purpose, but it's not um, a featured part of the Perl community either. So um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly um, the best way to promote this kind of tutorial, but certainly um, it, can, uh, it can become a part of the Perl community roadmap uh, component infrastructure components. So uh, on the, uh, the Perl archives um, or other website that's uh, one of the leaf node websites linked off of the Perl community roadmap, we would want to have this um, along with several other related uh, pieces of documentation or uh, videos or other tutorials and so forth to help new Perl programmers learn how to release their software. I mean, to get their Perl software up on CPAN. This is an important topic, and uh, I don't want to have to reinvent the wheel and, and uh, teach everyone over and over again. And, and uh, Lord knows that when I was first programming our Perl and my other early Perl releases, that uh, it probably would have been helpful to have a day one, day two, day three sort of... Uh, hand-holding tutorial. So, good job to uh, Lorenzo Ta, also known as Disipulus, Disipulus, however you pronounce that. Uh, yes, great job. That's um, pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Pretty Cool. All right. Well, uh, hello again. Yes, Tommy. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad to give tonight's uh, Pearl Town Hall presentation. As always, your fearless Pearl leader. So, yes, uh, check that out. These are all linked off of the uh, Pearl Programmers page, uh, or group, rather, the Pearl Programmers group. It's not a Facebook page. It's a Facebook group. Um, if you just scroll down past some of the fun articles, uh, you'll find it right here. Um, oh, and thank you to Gaurav Rai. Again, sorry if I'm doing a bad job pronouncing names, but uh, thank you, Mr. Rai, or, uh, very much for posting this. This is a, a very interesting a uh, very interesting link and a good tutorial to to step through for anybody here. Um, it covers introduction, um, preparations, tests, code, pod, more tests, testing standard error, uh, finishing up the module, um, and other uh, things such as exporter um, and so forth. So I, I will say that my software that I release myself on CPAN <clears throat> uses Ext Utils MakeMaker, which is also known as EUMM. Um, this, this is a type of, of uh, Perl testing uh, or Perl, uh, sorry, distribution framework that allows you to get your software built, bundled, distributed, uploaded onto CPAN and so forth in a more streamlined and controlled fashion. There's another one that's also very well known called Distzilla. 
and um, that's, I guess, kind of a competitor to uh, Make Maker. So I, I can thank uh, Rainy Urban. Hi, Rainy. Thank you um, for helping me get Make Maker working initially. And um, I would suggest that if you're a new Pro programmer and you want to release your software, you probably should use one of those two. Um, I, can, I can give you some pointers on Make Maker. I'm no expert. Um, I'm, I've used Distzilla once or twice when I had to because I was working on somebody else's software that already used it or something like that. But um, whenever I write my own software, I use Make Maker. So it's just my personal preference. It's what I'm used to. Uh, Tommy says that he likes Distzilla. So that's fine. I mean, uh, I've, I've used them both, and they're both well-supported and well-liked and well-loved even uh, in the Perl programming community. So just a side note on, on this piece of news. Okay, moving on, um, other news items. <clears throat> we have one from Dean. This was um, actually a, uh, a post <clears throat> by the world famous Brian D. Foy, the founder and creator of Pearlmongers, the worldwide organization for Perl programmers to meet in real life and sometimes online. So uh, we were very um, humbled to ever be able to meet with, with Mr. Uh, Foy or see his news um, or his cool code or uh, his new books that come out and so forth. He's, he's a very smart programmer. So this particular piece of news has to do with a, uh, an old feature in Perl that is called indirect object notation. And uh, direct object notation is, is what most of us are used to. And this is when you have a, um, an object that directly calls a, a method using an arrow. So this is an example here. Let me see, maybe I can zoom in a bit. Oop, and hopefully this is actually showing up correctly in the video. Yes, it is. Look at that. It looks great. Okay, so um, this is direct object notation. And it, it has the, uh, the horse before the cart, <coughs> which is the tongue-in-cheek pun uh, that we're leading up to here. And um, the horse, dollar horse, is an object. The arrow um, is saying call a method on this object, and cart is the name of a method. Now, I would, I would almost always uh, put open, closed parentheses here, even if there's no arguments or parameters, or uh, input data to pass to the cart method, but uh, you, can, you can call it without, and that's fine. Um, it won't compile with our Perl, but it'll, almost anything will compile with a regular Perl. <coughs> line noise, sorry, had some <clears throat> line noise in my throat. So, uh, so this is direct notation, this is normal notation. Okay, and I think in, in other languages they also sometimes used a dot, like it would be horse dot cart. So it, it changes based on language, and so if you're calling a, a uh, method or a directly accessing a data member, uh, also known as a property. But um, nevertheless, this is the direct object notation. The uh, indirect object notation is seen here where you do put the cart before the horse. And uh, we, we, uh, we don't like the indirect object notation 
in Pearl at least, uh, as Mr. Foy points out, uh, that C++ programmers and other programmers may not find this odd, um, but in Perl, it's not considered best practices to do this. In fact, it's not considered really normal to do this. I never ever, I don't think I've ever used indirect object notation. If I have, it was like an accident, and that's kind of the point. Um, if, if, you, uh, if you have a um, variable or a function or something that has a matching name to cart, or if you have uh, um, something else that would involve that would introduce some ambiguity, perhaps, or if you um, just uh, are not used to reading code that has reversed order of, of operations, or however you want to phrase it, reverse syntax would probably be more technically accurate. Uh, there, there could be many ways in which this could either be A, confusing, or much worse, B, wrong, broken, a bug. Um, not intentional. Unintentionally implementing an indirect object notation. So, uh, Perl already has so much syntax sugar and so much complicated syntax in general that, again, with the line noise issue, we just don't need more ways to do things. And I know that this is, he even mentions it here, uh, this flies in the face of Tim Toady. Uh, there is more than one way to do it. <clears throat> However, uh, sometimes Tim Toady does not serve us best. In fact, I would argue that often Tim Toady does not serve us best. In, in fact, I have made uh, Braswell's corollary to Tim Toady which is something along the lines of there is one best way to do it. And, and whatever that best way is, it should be able to be compiled, optimized, understood and maintained, uh, not ambiguous, not easily uh, implemented by accident or incorrectly, and so forth. And... Uh, the reason we're talking about this indirect object notation is because we have the opportunity now to, um, to disable it. So, uh, if you use, here we go, I'm just scrolling right here, no feature indirect, you can turn off this indirect object notation that should have never been implemented in the first place, in my not-so-humble opinion. <clears throat> also, hello, Mr. Generoso and Mr. Gomez. Welcome, sirs. And uh, Alex says, yes, he uses ampersand function or subroutine name and then open and close parentheses. I, um, I only use the, the ampersand prefix, the, the leading ampersand, when I don't have a choice because of some um, super high magic stuff I'm doing for our Perl internals for the compiler. I, I do try and um, avoid using the ampersand sigil just because it is uh, <clears throat> uncommon, I think, a lot of times in, in Perl programming. In fact, most Perl software that I look at on CPAN and so forth does not use the ampersand prefix unless it's necessary to do so, unless there is some ambiguity or something weird with the symbol table or 
again, if you're doing really high magic stuff like I have to do with the Perl compiler sometimes, you have no choice. You have to use the ampersand prefix. Now, I do always use the open and closed parentheses um, as a way to remind myself that it's a, it's a subroutine or method call. However, um, I don't really need both things to remind me. It's, I mean, they both pretty much mean the same thing, and I guess they can both be omitted, as we saw with, with this uh, bear word of cart that you can omit the ampersand and the parentheses and it works. So that being said, um, I, I, only, I only use the parentheses. Um, Alex says, yes, I, that he's distinguishing functions from variables. I agree. However, variables um, should have their own sigil. And uh, and I usually use arrays and hashes by reference, so they have a, uh, a square bracket instead of a uh, round parentheses. However, I will say that um, uh, there's nothing wrong with with using ampersands on functions, and that is the sort of uh, pedantically correct implementation. So I'll give a thumbs up to Mr. Gomez for going above and beyond in making his code expressive, which is something lacking in the Perl world today. So yes, uh, long story short, if you are uh, upgrading to the new version of Perl, which is 5.32, and if you want to turn off indirect object notation, you can do it directly through the Perl interpreter. Um, also, Dean points out uh, do, 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 that you can do this right here. You can use the um, Perl critic policy that is called prohibit indirect syntax. Thanks to Andy Lester and uh, everybody else who is in charge of Pearl Critic. Um, also, uh, the, uh, the entire Pearl Critic team, which, uh, as you can see here, is, is uh, Thal Jeff, including Thal Jeff as well, which is Jeffrey Thalhammer. And uh, myself, I am a member of the Pearl Critic Administration. So, um, so yeah, that was one thing that Dean pointed out. And also, uh, Kent Frederick had a good point as well, that um, if you do not disable indirect syntax, there's a whole class of common accidental bugs that are a nightmare to diagnose because you unintentionally invoked indirect method syntax, and the parser went along with it instead of reporting a syntax error. So yeah, that's pretty much the same thing I was saying. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's <clears throat> something that you should not be using. If you're using indirect object syntax, please stop. Okay, moving on, um, we had uh, another item here. Oh yes, this one was, well, first of all, um, request tracker 5.0.0 is, is coming out. This is the software that for many years um, had been used for the Perl interpreter itself and many Perl projects. I think now everything's kind of upgrading to Git, GitHub and GitLab and so forth, but request tracker is um, still pretty cool uh, I, I would say that it, it certainly has its, it certainly has its, uh, place in the world. Um, here's old Jimmy, Jim Brandt, former, uh, president of the Pearl Foundation. And, uh, so yeah, that's, um, that's pretty good. That's, you know, 
very good for them. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm glad that they are actually not dead yet. Let's just put it that way. They're, they're uh, hanging in there. They're moving forward. Um, okay, so RT is still used for CPAN bug reports. Um, I'm, I'm guessing you may be talking about CPAN, the actual software that runs CPAN. I'm not sure. So uh, let's see. I was trying to save this file and see if we could open it up. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it's... it's uh, it's actually written in Perl. Um, oh, I guess you guys can't see this because I'm looking at it in my own file. Well, nevertheless, you can download your own copy, look at the source code, and uh, hey, maybe you like that. I personally um, was a big fan of GitHub for many years until their acquisition. Now we have uh, moved the majority of our projects and all new projects over to GitLab. And, um, okay, so Tommy Butler has linked us to rt.cpan.org. Wonderful. Thank you, Tommy. That's, uh, let's, let's see, we can actually open that up here real quick. rt.cpan.org. Okay, we'll see what that says here. Ah, yes, that's the old login. Okay, cool. So, uh, so yes, that's um, just something worthwhile, something worth looking into. Uh, yet another new version of Perl software. Okay, moving on. Um, I was actually on the in the process of scrolling down here to Ovid, Curtis Poe, who has um, released a new a bit of information, a new proposal that has to do with core. <clears throat> okay, so uh, uh, still on the RT thing, Tommy says, this is where bug reports on modules go. Cool. Okay, so core, um, core is a new proposal that uh, is an upgrade for Perl object-oriented programming. Now, um, those of you who are familiar with <clears throat> object-oriented programming in Perl, you will know that there's, there's really only one built-in object-oriented um, system for Perl, which is the BLESS operator, um, which, which ties into the, uh, the package operator or keyword. And, um, and this is how you, you can essentially uh, create your own style of, of object-oriented programming um, with no real guidelines on how anything works and, uh, or, or even how, how to make a constructor or or destructor, or uh, accessors and mutators, or methods and, 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 and uh, properties, or data members. So you kind of have to build all this yourself by using bless and package. Um, that's all well and good, and, and uh, many people do that. At the same time, there are a number of widely used object-oriented frameworks, the most popular of which is Moose, um, and uh, that's also the most powerful and the most slow in many ways. It's, uh, it has a meta-object protocol which allows you to control the way that, uh, that your object-oriented programming experience works. So, um, there's, there's others, uh, there's uh, Moo, there's Mouse, there was a project called Mo, um, and uh, in fact, Arperl, 
the optimizing Perl compiler, has its own Perl object-oriented uh, system that compiles into super fast C++ classes uh, directly compiled and and I mean it's ultra fast it's it's the fastest there is in the world so uh, there are there are a number of different object oriented frameworks to use in Perl um, Tommy asked how is core better or different than all the others and uh, I can't really answer that question because I have not seen core in real use yet. I've only been reading about it. So we would have to get Ovid on the horn, uh, get him on the town hall, get him on a panel of some kind, and uh, get him on the hook. What, uh, what, what is different, what is special about core um, when compared to the others? So... <clears throat> We're just going to to briefly look at this um, for just a moment here. This is about multi-role application. So um, it talks about here that uh, uh, a role allows you to sh uh, provide shared behavior across classes that is not um, necessarily exclusive to a specific class. So there's a thing called role rest client that provides a, a rest capability to a, a class that you design. Even if your class is not related by inheritance to that role rest client. So um, this, is, this is referred to as a cross-cutting concern. It's something that, that goes across several different sort of unrelated pieces of software things that are not directly related or inheriting from one another. So um, roles also provide something different. There was uh, another article that Ovid had written called Synthetic versus Natural Code that uh, took some terminology from Mark Jason Dominus. This was a while back. I remember reading this one um, quite some time ago. Uh, let's see. This was in 2009. <clears throat> so essentially, um, uh, the, the, it's the same terminology that's now structural versus functional code. Um, functional means that it's solving a business problem, and this is what we usually love to write, according to Ovid. Structural code is what you write to work around technical limitations of your programming language, and there's a book uh, that's called Design Patterns, which is, uh, it's all about when and how to write your structural code properly. So um, he goes on to say that they're making an assumption in core. We want to spend more time writing functional code, which solves our problems, and less time writing structural code, which solves our programming languages problems. So uh, in Perl, there's... There's a lot of functionality that we already have, but there's a lot of limitations as well. And object-oriented systems are one of those, as I mentioned, where there's a lot of different options, too many different options, perhaps. So um, he goes on to give some example about linked lists and the splice operator and so forth. Um, but uh, uh, it's, he then gives an example about the, another different programming language called Grace, but he does give an example here in core. So he's using this role keyword, which does not exist in, in normal Perl, that would have to be added by core. Has does not exist in Perl. Method does not exist in Perl. These are all special keywords added by core. Class, special keyword. Has or does special keyword. These are all special keywords added by core. So you're, you're um, <clears throat> adding this counter role to the class of two counters, even though that class presumably does not inherit directly the counter role. It's uh, receiving it as a multi-role. 
<clears throat> as a multi-role application in this case. So, um, <sighs> he finishes up by saying, with multi-role application, the class above would no longer necessarily be required to implement the role's ink and counter methods. I'm unsure if that's really an issue, but it's worth keeping in mind. So, he's still working on this. It's not done yet. I'm not going to bother trying to use Core until it's actually released as an official part of Perl. Hilariously, it would presumably be released as part of the Perl Core, C-O-R-E. I'm guessing that uh, that's one of the puns or, or naming convention uh, etymology that Curtis Ovid Poe was using when coming up the name for his new object-oriented framework. Um, however, it is a little bit confusing, perhaps because, again, of the Perl core, which itself is confusing because it's not talking about the Perl interpreter runtime written in C89. It's talking about the list of Perl modules that are released with that runtime whenever it goes out as a new version like Perl 5.32 and so forth. Also confusing as... Tommy Butler pointed out because there's another different thing called coroutines that's not related and even more confusing and perhaps controversial. So uh, I am I am actually looking forward to having a an official uh, object-oriented platform or framework for Perl if. Uh, we still keep bless and package around for those who want to roll their own solutions. If we uh, allow people to continue using moose and mouse and so forth if they want to, I personally don't use those, um, but I know a lot of people do. And, and especially if, most importantly if, it runs fast and does not slow everything down. If it can run as fast as bless and package by simply being implemented in, in part of the C89 code or at least having some sort of really quick compile time implementation so it's you're not feeling any runtime slowdown over the use of bless and package. Now, if it was a negligible slowdown like a a constant factor or something small, that would probably be okay. Um, and uh, and if we can achieve these things with core, then I will uh, strongly consider slash um, tentatively plan on and uh, and conditionally commit myself to upgrading our Perl so that um, our Perl does not uh, use its own standalone object-oriented system anymore, but instead uses core. And we could actually compile uh, core and uh, have that as the official object model for our Perl, the optimizing Perl compiler. That's something that we'll have to wait until it's very stable, well accepted, very fast, and well understood, and, and not going to change, and so forth, because I will actually have to upgrade the. Uh, Perl, uh, the R Perl grammar, and the compiler, and tons of other complicated stuff. So, uh, Tommy says, yay, I love metaprogramming and object orientation. Well, I, uh, I also love object-oriented programming when appropriate, especially when it's fast and works right. Um, I'm, I'm not so much into the heavy use of metaprogramming um, unless it's necessary, I do have to do quite a bit of it for the compiler. 
Um, I try and avoid moose and mop whenever I can because it's kind of overkill, but I know that it has a very important role to play, pun intended, uh, for um, complicated corporate projects and, and so forth and catalyst projects and stuff that's built on moose <clears throat> but um but yeah that's uh something to look forward to and and hopefully it will work right hopefully it will get accepted and and adopted and i know that we're kind of uh um, behind the curve on having a a really um modern object-oriented framework built into the Perl core. So it would definitely give Perl a boost to have that uh, feature added. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Moving along, moving right along. Boy, uh, time flies when you're having fun. Um, that was uh, that. That was that. Uh, okay, we're going to skip on... Oh, there was one other... Boy, people are sending me messages on Facebook, and I have to apologize in advance um, for that, but there was a, uh, <clears throat> there was one other thing I was going to mention, which was a poll that was created, and I'm, I'm going to uh, try and bring up, let's see, actually, if I go back to here, then I can search for our pearl. because I wanted to bring up the change log. Changes, ch 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 changes. Okay, there was a poll in the Perl programmer group that, uh, let's see, I'm gonna read it for you guys here. It's about change logs or change changes. Okay, Vlado Kaselj, Again, sorry for any mispronunciations. Created a poll um, just two days ago, and he said, I have recently started changing my change log file name from changes to change log. And I am also thinking to change from chronological order of versions in the file to reverse chronological. I wonder what is the prevalent convention any comments are welcome, or you can fill in the poll. So I uh, use the file name changes, so I just now voted in that. Um, and I'm not sure what he means by chronological versus reverse chronological, which is which, I'm not sure. Mine has the newest entries at the top, which is, I think is common, so that you immediately see what's happening. I have seen the other way where the oldest ones are at the top. I have also seen the file named as change log instead of changes. But um, this is the way that I do it with our Perl. And uh, I guess we can only assume since it's the way that I do it with our Perl, it must be the right way. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's, there is more than one way to do it, Tim Toady. So you can, uh, Vlado, I don't know which way is the right way. I guess either way is the right way. Um, so yeah, that's worth looking at. Okay, I was going to bring up just one other fun little item to give some props to somebody who is a very hardworking member of the Pearl community. I know there are many of us. But um, this one was something that appeared on the Pearl Weekly. Pearl Weekly. <clears throat> so this is issue 464. Wow. That's a lot. That's like eight, nine years, almost nine years. It's a lot if you do it every week. So yeah, there's uh, comments here. Um, and uh, you can actually see our person that we're going to give some thumbs up to right here. Mohammed or Mohammed S. Anwar. Mr. Anwar or Anwar, again, sorry 
to everyone for mispronouncing any names. But uh, Muhammad has been doing something really cool. It's called the uh, Pearl Weekly Challenge. So, um, as you can see here, that he's got some prizes. He's trying to get people to step out of their comfort zone. Um, he, he has a monthly winner. And, uh, and thanks to Peter Sargent of Pro Careers for providing the prize money. So, this uh, week 64 was uh, a video. He may have videos for the other one, but I just wanted to, to say... Look at this pretty neat thing here. Um, Mohammed actually made a video of himself. Very brave thing to do. Am I right? Uh, of, of his live coding. So. Hi guys, this is Mohammed once again. Hi guys, this is Mohammed once again. And he goes through his, uh, his entire process here with um, his split screen window, uh, looking up information about the, the uh, challenge, starting to write his code out here, use strict, use warnings, very good, glad he's doing that. And, um, and he brings you all the way through as he's writing code and uh, continuing to run the code as it goes further and further along. So, that's a, that's a pretty neat uh, little thing. He's got his matrix here. Um, he's actually uh, writing a you know, fair bit, little bit of code here. Some uh, for each loop, a sub routine called find path. Um, he's writing more and more here until he gets up to the end and actually starts running his code. And uh, you can see the output of the code here. So, you know, these, these weekly challenges are not meant to be extremely, uh, you know, um, mind-blowing, like, oh, wow, new machine learning algorithm or anything like that. But, uh, but it's, it's still very neat to see people putting out new videos of their live Perl code, to see people putting out Perl weekly challenges. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's cool. It's really neat. It's something that, um, I wish more people were doing. You know, we, we have the Pearl Town Hall. We have, uh, the, the Pearl Weekly Challenge. We have the Pearl Weekly itself, um, by, uh, our, our good friend Gabor. And, uh, oh, and there's Liz. Hi, Liz. So, yeah, this, uh, the Pearl Weekly covers Raku and Pearl. We're fine with that. We, we read the Pearl parts, and we're glad for the Raku parts. We're glad to see that Liz is still alive and doing her, her Raku stuff. Um, we're glad to see that uh, Muhammad is, is doing his Pearl code, and he does Raku code too. So, hey, why not? You know, if you, if you really like both, go ahead. Um, you've got... Uh, other examples here of the same Pearl challenge. Um, here's one by Dave Jacoby. So um, he, he creates a, his own Pearl code here that is a bit different than Mohammed's. So definitely uh, worth taking a look at. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of high magic Pearl code. As you can see here, lots of Lots of uh, unnamed special magic stuff and sigils and so forth, but not so much that you can't eventually make sense of it. And uh, very good use of high magic pearl to create interesting uh, solutions to problems. So <clears throat> that's, uh, that's most of what I wanted to go over today. Um, it's a bunch of pearl news items, I realize. And, um, and I, uh, I didn't want to spend too much time on any one of them because we want to cover a variety of, of interesting topics. 
Uh, and, and as always, if you have your own ideas that you would like to see featured on, on our future editions of the Pearl Town Hall, then, uh, then please don't hesitate to type it in the chat box or send me a message or make a post in the Pearl Programmers group. There's uh, any number of ways to contact us and, uh, and see what you want to see, do what you want to do. So uh, with that, I, I thank you all very much for joining us for episode number 11. Kind of like the old Pearl 11, huh? I, uh, I did consider making an episode about Pearl 11, but since we're retiring Pearl 11 in favor of the Pearl Community Roadmap. Um, I, I didn't want to, you know, belabor it too much. And uh, also, we did recently have a pretty good discussion about Pearl 11 as part of our Raku episode. So, uh, anyhow, this, this is our uh, Pearl News Desk format for the Pearl Town Hall. And uh, episode number 11, bringing you all kinds of uh, various news leading up to the very exciting Pearl Conference happening just next week. So be sure to stay tuned. We'll have some special coverage, some special panel discussions, and who knows, maybe some special guests. I don't know. We're It's going to be a... Uh, a very special week for Pearl next week. So with that, I, I thank you again, everyone, for joining us live. Thank you all those who typed in your interesting comments. And uh, thanks especially to all of our supporters at patreon.com forward slash rpearl. Be sure to check us out, and uh, we will have... Lots of new exciting R Pearl news coming to you soon as well. So, this is your fearless leader, Will the Chill, reporting live, episode 11, from the Pearl capital of the world, Austin, Texas, signing off. So long, and good night. Please be sure to wash those hands, wear those masks, and stay safe, everyone. Thank you, and good night. And cut.